Hello guys, welcome to my new uh, CSS GUI tutorial video. I think it's tutorial number 12 in this um, CSS GUI tutorial series and I hope that so far you've been learning new things. Alright, so today we're going to learn about the um, automatic grid placement. So um, the grid item placement is something that counts a lot when you're designing a new uh, website layout, specifically a grid layout because you can't always know how to align your items properly, especially when you don't have a um, a set of rows or a number of rows um, specified in mind. So uh, today that's what we're going to look at. Um, I have uh, in code pen right here a grid container with uh, 15, 15 grid items. And here I have some basic styling on every item to give them uh, an orange color. and um, I'm also giving a yellowish background color to the main grid container. Okay, so uh, here what we have for the column template is uh, four equally sized columns. And then I have uh, 70 pixels as the automatic uh, height for every new row that gets created. And um, when I say every new row that gets created, I'm referring to rows that are not explicitly defined in the grid. So that's what these properties serve. Uh, stands for. I think I covered this in a previous tutorial, so you can always feel free and go check out my previous videos and come back to this one. Okay, so the main focus today in this video is the grid auto flow property. So by default, it sets to rows. So um, here, for instance, I have four columns. So one, two, three, four. And uh, every time I add new items, uh, so far as they, they don't fit, they are above, they are more than four items the grid is going to create new rows and place these new items in them. So for instance, if I was to uh, add three more items like this, the grid would just add a new row and push whatever item that could not fit within these last four columns to new rows. So again, I'm going to paste a lot more and we have many more rows instantly created. But uh, you can also change this value you, you, you can have control over it, so you can change this to column if you want. So before I change this to column, first of all, I want to specify the number of rows that I want. I'm going to add a fixed value here. So I'm going to remove the grid auto rows property right here, and I'm rather going to use the grid template rows property. And I'm going to say I want every row to be um, 70 pixels again. And this time around, I want three rows. Okay, so now these are implicitly defined. Uh, this is an implicitly defined grid row. It's not explicitly defined in the CSS in the style sheets. So um, here, for instance, you're gonna see that if I add new items again, it's just going to create new rows like we saw it previously. But then, how about I change this this row keyword to column? Okay, so note that here we have a width of 700 pixels for this grid container. So anytime I add new items, okay, I add new items that cannot fit in the grid, it will instantly create new columns and add them there. In this case, the width of these columns is determined by the font size and the padding around the, the text and everything. So um, here, for instance, we have four columns, as we can see here. So we have one, two, three, four, and these have a width of um, one FR, one fraction unit. So they are equally sized, one, two, three, four. These are explicitly defined, but then this one is not. This is the fifth column. And the reason why it's not adding these three items below, like we saw previously, is because of this column keyword. So this means that we have three rows. This is explicitly defined. Anytime we add something, that cannot fit here in this grid is going to add new rows. So let's see what this means. I'm going to copy these again and add four more grid items. Now it's adding the new items in a new columns that is just created. And you can see that the width of these now gets reduced, these four equally sized columns from one to 10 right here. And the reason is because of this 
um, fixed width here. We have 700 pixels. So the grid is trying to accommodate all the items within that space that we've assigned to it. So you get how it works now. Okay, so now I'm going to clear all of this now that we, we get this. I think you understand by now. If you if you don't, feel free to drop your questions in the comment section and I will get back to you. But then there's one more keyword that we need to look into and that's the um, the dense keywords, okay? D-E-N-S-E. -E. Um, I think for this one, I'm going to clear the um, template rows and I'm going to go back to grid auto rows and I'm going to assign every row a value of uh, 70 pixels by the way if you use the uh, grid auto rows property with the grid auto flow set to column you're going to have many columns instantly created <laughs> okay so you're not going to have any rows so you need to be careful with that there so i'm going to change this back again to row so that we get this like the default the default uh, template design and then now I'm going to uncomment this piece of code that I have right here. Again, if you're on code pen, you can simply hit the shortcut control forward slash to comment and uncomment pieces of code. So you can see that now we have empty spaces right here near the first item, item two, and also near item three. If you look at the size here and the templates of our grid, uh, our four column grid, you notice that actually item 5 can fit, or let's say any item, one item can fit in here and another item can fit in there because usually we are supposed to have four items per row. Okay, so this already takes the space of two items. So we can have two more items here, one item here, and two more items there as well. But the reason why we have these holes is because we've asked the grid to stretch the first second third and fourth items so what the grid does is it just creates or uh, it leaves empty spaces and that's exactly what we're asking it to do it doesn't assume that you want to fill in any gaps or whatever so how do you fill in the gaps let's say you want to get rid of these spaces how do you get rid of them that's when the keyword i talked about dense comes into play item 5 doesn't have any um, instruction in the style sheet. There's no explicit um, definition for it. Or th there's no declaration uh, forcing it to stretch or anything. So what it's going to do is going to take item 5 and carry it over here to fill in this first hole. Then it's going to find item 6 and fill in this next hole right here. I think you can see my mouse uh, on this video. Then item 7 is going to go next to item 2, item 8, right here and item 9 right there so what then does basically it attempts to fill in the holes uh encountered earlier on in the grid so let's see how this works i just typed in the keyword dense and in our live preview we see that we get exactly what we expected so that's how the dense keyword works it fills in the gaps um by uh replacing or uh, automatically uh, changing the position of grid items. So that's why we refer to this as auto grid placements or auto grid item placements. So um, I think that's about it for this video. I hope you, you get the idea. Any questions that you have, please feel free to drop them in the comment section and I'll try my very best to get back to you. Um, in the meantime, please, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, make sure you like this video, you share it, and um, I'll catch you next time. Bye.